percentiles play an important role in the data science as uh, they locate a certain point of information in a data set. That point of information itself may not be seen in the data set, however, it identifies some key information about data analysis. As the names call, quartiles talk about a quarter of a data set and percentiles talk about a percentage of the data set, the hundredths. For example, um, if you score in the 90th percentile of an exam, it doesn't mean that you have scored above 90% in the test. It means that within your cohort, 90% of the test scores were less or below your score. So you have performed among the top 10%. Percentiles are commonly uh, to report the scores in national and international set, uh, tests like SAT and GRE, etc. And um, uh, if for instance, a 70th percentile of uh, the 2013 GRE test was 156. And that means that if you scored 156 on that exam, then your score was better than 70% of the test takers. Now, we will talk about uh, percentiles a bit more detail in our next lecture. This lecture is particularly talking about quartiles. So as we have explained, uh, the first quartile Q1 talks about the first uh, quarter of the data set, which is the 25th percentile. And uh, let's talk first about Q3, the third quartile. Q3 is the 75th percentile because it talks about a point that lies uh, that talks about three-fourths of the data. And Q2, uh, the second quartile, is called the median, which is the 50th percentile. So it talks about the middle point of the data. Let's talk about the median in a bit more detail. A median is a number that is associated with the midpoint of the frequency distribution of the data in an ordered form. So, as before, we have to order a data from smallest to the largest, and then median could be one of the values um, among the numbers if they are odd numbers of values, or it could not be there if there are even number of values. Uh, but one thing is sure that half of the data is less than or equal to the median, and the rest half of the data would be greater than or equal to the median. As an example, we look at the following data. So here we see 14 numbers, which are an even number of numbers, okay, even number of data. So among the 14 numbers, we can't see the median. So to find the median, we order the data from smallest to the largest, which we have done in the second uh, row of data. Please observe that. Okay, now among these 14 observations, the median should be uh, between the 7th and the 8th value, which are 6.8 and 7.2. So we add them and divide by 2 to get the median, which turns out to be 7. Now you can see that 7 is not there among the data values. 7.2 is there, but 7 is not. Because it is an even number of values, and the median had to be found by taking the midpoint of the 7th and the 8th value. Now that we understand how to find the median, we move on to quartiles, which is easier to find because it's a very similar process like finding a median. All we do is, uh, since quartiles uh, separate the data into quarters, and there are four quarters in a whole data set, and the second quarter is called the median, the first quartile would be the median of all the numbers that are below the actual median. So in the, in the data set that we consider, we had found that uh, the median was 7. So Q1, the first quartile of the data, would be the median of all the points which are less than 7, and Q3 will be the median of all the points that are greater than 7. So we consider the data set again, starting from 1 to 11.5, the median is 7, so we uh, consider the lower half of the data set, which is below 7, to find the first quartile Q1. And uh, the data set is there starting from 1 to 6.8. How many numbers are there? Can you please count them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 numbers from 1 to 6.8. Now, in 7 numbers, this is an odd number, odd number of data set. So the, the median would be uh, the middle point of these numbers because there will be uh, three numbers below its median and three numbers above its median. So which should be the middle point? 
it should be the fourth number in the data set and which is the fourth number it is two now please note that the third number is also two but that cannot be the median the median has to be the fourth number out of seven values so, so the fourth two is the median um, which is the first quartile of the whole data set uh, so q1 is two in the same way we find the third quartile that has to be among the numbers that are bigger than the median um, which are starting from 7.2 ending on to 11.5 and again there are seven values so the middle value or the fourth value starting from 7.2 would be the median and the fourth value is 9 so the third quartile q3 would be 9 now you can easily verify that uh, among the whole data set 75 percent of the data set would be less than 9 and 25 percent would be greater than 9. so we go back to the data set and uh, we see that it starts from 1 and ends on to 11.5 so uh, we know that the that q3 is 9 and the numbers greater than 9 are 10 10 11.5 so three numbers are uh, 25 percent of this whole data set and the numbers below 9 are uh, starting from 1 to 8.3 so uh, there are 10 numbers which make 75 percent of the 14 points so that's how we divide a data set into q1 q2 q3 where q2 is the median of the data set q1 is the first quartile and q3 is the third quartile it's also important to understand the interquartile range which is a number that um, identifies all the data that lies between q1 and q3 it is called iqr interquartile range and is um, easily obtained by subtracting q1 from q3 now uh, this uh, number iqr is actually very important because it helps us to identify uh, some numbers that that may not actually uh, represent the data in a very uh, good way and they are called outliers um, a number is an outlier if it is below 1.5 times the interquartile range or it is above 1.5 times the interquartile range these are called potential outliers um, and these potential outliers have the significance that sometimes they um, they are the key to understand uh, some very very important uh, aspects of the data uh, because they may be uh, the error points or some kind of abnormality in the data so they are also very very important especially in medical sciences potential outliers are sometimes the indicators of a very a significant change um, in the amount of the drug or in the amount of the uh, of the heart condition that appears uh, uh, suddenly somewhere uh, with some patient next we consider an example um, and we are considering the house prices which is a very interesting um, example uh, to find out the iqr and all the q1 q2 q3s um, because the house prices represent the prices of houses in a certain locality and uh, we should not expect uh, a, a large variation between these prices and um, with these um, elements of q1 q2 q3 we'll be able to determine any outliers that we can see um, in this particular locality so uh, we move ahead and we know the first step to uh, find the required elements is to organize the data from the smallest to the largest and um, after doing that we see that the smallest price is 114,950 um, in whatever the currency uh, the place is using and the largest price is uh, 5,500,000 how many numbers are there can you see there are 13 numbers so it's an odd number of data so the median of this data would be the middle point and if there are 13 numbers then the seventh number will be the middle point and the seventh number is 488,800 am I right? I'm right okay so we calculate the median to be 488,800 
Next, we have to find the first quartile Q1, and we know that the first quartile will be the median of the first half of the data, all the numbers below the median 488,800. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, uh, the numbers below 488,800 are starting from 114,950, ending on 479,000, and these are six numbers, so which is an odd number of points. So uh, its median, which is the first quartile, would be the midpoint of the of the third and the fourth point, uh, which is 230,500 and 387,000. And so uh, we can see that first quartile would be uh, the number 308,750. Now um, it's obvious that we can see the median, the actual median of the data, which is 488,800 among the data set while we cannot see Q1 in the data set. Similarly, Q3 would be the median of the second half of the data set. So it will be uh, the midpoint of the numbers 639,000 and 659,000, which turns out to be 649,000. After knowing Q1 and Q3, we can easily find the interquartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1 and it turns out to be 340,250. And to understand any outliers, we have to understand, we have to find out uh, 1.5 times IQR, which is 1.5 times the number 343, uh, 340,250, uh, and it turns out to be 510,375. Now, if we subtract this number from Q1, we obtain minus 201,625. And if we add this number to Q3, we obtain 1,159,375. Now, these numbers, uh, which obtained uh, from subtracting uh, 1.5 times IQR from Q1 and adding it to Q3, these numbers are the outliers. Now we see that there is no uh, house price uh, which is less than minus 201.625 uh, 201, uh, However, uh, there is one point which is higher than 1 million 159,375, which is 5 million 500,000, and this uh, point lies within the data and it is a potential outlier. So, this price of the house <coughs> is way uh, more than, <coughs> excuse me, way more than uh, the average prices that we can see uh, in the range of the houses. So, we, we will consider that as a potential outlier. And this could be either a mistake or um, some discrepancy in the data that we have to investigate very carefully. Now we are considering an example. Um, and we have 11 salaries with us. And we have to calculate the IQR and any potential outliers in the data. Do you remember the first step to do? I'm sure you do. The first step is to organize the data in order from the smallest to the largest. Now the smallest number as you can see is 28,000 and the largest number is 115,500. Now can you please organize the data and find out the median? I'm sure you've done that. Uh, so the median of the data turns out to be 57,000 which is your median or Q2. To find Q1 we have to find the median of the numbers below 57,000. How many numbers are below 57,000? There are five numbers. So the third number would be your Q1, which is 39,500. And similarly, Q3 would be the midpoint, the third number of the data greater than 57,000. And that number turns out to be 69,500, which is your Q3. So now you can find the interquartile range, which you know must be Q3 minus Q1, and it turns out to be 30,000. Okay, now to find the outliers, we have to look at 1.5 times 
the interquartile range and that turns out to be 45,000. And if you subtract 45,000 from Q1, you get the number minus 6,500. And if you add the number 45,000 to Q3, you get the number 114,500. Now, definitely there are no negative numbers in the data. Uh, so there are no um, lower outliers, but uh, there is a number bigger than 114,500, which is 115,500. So that must be the outlier. And we check how we did. Okay, we see that both our answers are correct. Now we are considering another example of the test scores of uh, two stats classes, one held during the day and one held during the night or the evening in a particular college. There are two data sets given to you and um, I, I hope you remember that the first thing you have to do is to organize the data set quickly. Please do that now. Now you are given a five number summary um, of these classes which, which includes information about the minimum number, the maximum number, Q1, Q2 and Q3. Now please pause the video here and verify that these numbers are correct. And then you can find the interquartile range for the day group by subtracting Q1 from Q3. It turns out to be 26.5 and the IQR for the night group turns out to be 11. Now uh, the interquartile range is definitely different for the two classes and it tells us about the variability um, in, the, in the data set. And we see there is uh, definitely um, some uh, more variation to be uh, expected in the day class test scores because it has a, a bigger range 26.5 than the night class. And when we actually um, calculate the outliers, and for that we need to calculate first um, the IQR times 1.5 for each data set, please do that. And then um, uh, Q1 minus IQR times 1.5 turns out to be 16.25 and Q3 plus um, IQR uh, turns out to be 122.25 for the day class. And we see that uh, the minimum and maximum values of the day classes, which are 32 and 99, um, they are uh, greater than uh, the 16.25 and 122.25 numbers that we have calculated to establish the outliers. So um, uh, since they are uh, all greater uh, and less than these numbers respectively, we, we don't expect to be any outliers in the day classes. Um, however, when we calculate the night class data um, and we obtain Q1 minus IQR times 1.5, it turns out to be 61.5. Um, and the second uh, uh, part would be Q3 plus IQR times 1.5, which turns out to be 105.5. And uh, we see that uh, there is no score greater than 105.5, so there is no upper outlier. However, there are two scores, 45 and 25.5, that are below 61.5. So these two scores are the outliers in this data.